super scientist. We're going to be looking at water that's stored underground. So I can describe how water moves into the ground and is stored. So we're talking about those features, not surface water, not lakes, not rivers, but water underground, which is oddly enough called groundwater. So there's a couple of different sections of water underground. The first zone is the saturated zone. So think about if you have a sponge and you put it in a bucket of water, it's going to soak up all the water. It's saturated. It's completely filled with water. Well, that's like the saturated zone. So it's permeable soil. It's soil that water can penetrate through, that water can move through. So down here, this uh, zone where there's blue stuff and rock particles, that's the saturated zone. So the blue represents water and all these little particles are showing you the sediment that's underground. The top of the saturated zone is going to be called the water table. So it's not a table made of water. The water table is this layer right here, and it's just the point at which below that you are going to encounter water. So the other zone is the unsaturated zone. So think about a dry sponge. So it's a sponge before it is put into water. So it doesn't have water or has very little water in it. So this is the unsaturated zone at the top, and the unsaturated zone is going to be right above the water table. It's going to have a lot of air pockets in it, so you can see these sections in between the rock particles. Those are the air pockets. There's going to be very little moisture, and the reason why you can see on the surface here if it's raining, that rain is going to infiltrate down through the soil, down through the rock particles, and then will end up getting stored here in the saturated zone. So basically the unsaturated zone is where the water is soaking down through it and then hits the water table, and then there's water below that. So what's below the saturated zone? Well, below the saturated zone at the bottom, so the base of it right here, is going to be bedrock, which in most cases is going to be granite, which is just a solid, very dense material. So water is not going to be able to penetrate through that because it's impermeable. Water can't move through it. So we have a very nice diagram here showing you some groundwater and structures, uh, different features underground. Your stem aqua. What's aqua mean? Water. Aqua means water. So an aquifer is an underground layer of rock or soil that contains water. So you have several different features that you can see here in this illustration of groundwater. So there's a spring, which we'll look at in just a second. You can see the water trickling out of the surface there. This is an aquifer because it's an area underground that has water. You also have an artesian well, which you don't have to know about, but it's on this illustration, so I've got it labeled here for you. So that's where you've got a couple aquifers. There's an aquifer. Here's another aquifer. And there's a crack in the rock, and it causes a lot of pressure. Basically, squeezes the water up through, and then it sprays out. So it's the water is under a lot of pressure so that um, it, when it gets pushed to the surface, it sprays everywhere, basically. So this is the dry well. This well is dry um, for maybe a variety of reasons. So at this point, which is the depth of the well, there is no water. So maybe there was water. Maybe the aquifer at one point had extended up to this. So here's your aquifer down here. So maybe the water level, the water table, was up here at one point. Or maybe they stopped drilling in this well and didn't drill down far enough. Or there could be a drought. So maybe the drought caused there to be dry well in this area. And then this one is an active well. So this well is active because the um, extension here, this borehole, extends all the way down into the aquifer. It hits the saturated zone. So so that one would be able to pull up some amount of water from your aquifer. Here's a beautiful picture of a spring. So this is not referring to the season. This is referring to a feature on the ground or in the ground, underground. So a spring is going to occur where you have water that's flowing out of cracks in a rock. So uh, this is our area of land, our feature that has some kind of fissure, some opening right here, and then water is coming up from the aquifer and you see a tiny little waterfall. So a lot of times um, the water may just sort of trickle out of the surface and just sort of like over the land a little bit or this one seems to have a little bit more volume of water. And a geyser. This is a beautiful picture of Old Faithful at Yellowstone National Park, which you may have heard of before. So that's out west in like uh, the area of Wyoming and a little bit Montana and Idaho. So a geyser is a type of hot springs that erupts. 
So uh, Old Faithful is referred to as Old Faithful because it erupts consistently about every 90 minutes or so. Um, so it's a hot spring because it is a spring feature. The, there's a, a fissure, some kind of opening, a crack in the rock on the earth here. Um, and the water instead of trickling out in this case to make it a geyser is going to erupt. It sort of explodes. And it's a hot spring. So why is it hot? Oh, I wonder. So it's hot because underneath this area is going to be a magma chamber, some kind of volcanic activity. So that magma, super hot. It's so hot that it's melted the rock. It's melted rock, literally. So that magma is going to heat up the water so that when it erupts, in this case, in the geyser, it's hot. And here's um, a beautiful diagram that you have to... Um, label in your notes and you can look at that in just a few minutes so a couple of different terms of things that you see here permeable and impermeable so the stem permea means um, being able to pass or go through so permeable materials are going to allow water to pass through and the reason why is because they have these large little pockets that um, will allow the water and moisture to move through and between the rock particles. So sand is an example, gravel is another example. So this appears to have some kind of um, sandy loam material. So water rains up here on the surface and then um, down below the grass, it's gonna infiltrate down through this permeable rock layer, which is the unsaturated zone because there's no water in it or very little water. You can see tiny little bits of water that's infiltrating downward. So then we have the water table at this line where we uh, encounter water sort of backing up. And then this is going to be referred to as the saturated zone because we do find water in it. So then impermeable materials, your stem permea, again, permea meaning pass or go through. Impermeable materials do not allow water to pass through. And impermeable materials are going to have few to no pores. So this is your impermeable layer down here. And it's impermeable because it's not going to allow water to soak down through it and a lot of times it's going to be solid material for example granite is the bedrock that we have in this area so granite is impermeable and will not allow moisture to pass through and you can see um, in this section here this permeable material that's kind of like gravel there's air pockets moisture will be able to fill in or water will be able to fill in those areas whereas with this impermeable layer it's pretty much completely solid so it will not allow water to pass through it clay as an example granite like I said earlier is another example as well and that's what we have as bedrock around here so here's your large picture that you have to label. This is also in your textbook, so you can look in there as well. So water underground is going to move down between the particles of soil and through the cracks and spaces in those layers of rock. So here's your permeable layer that water can pass through, your impermeable layer that water cannot pass through, your unsaturated zone as part of your permeable material that water is going to pass through but not stay in, Water table is right here where you hit that point and water is below that. And then your saturated zone is this whole area, at, including the water table, which is where you're going to have moisture and it's going to contain uh, the water. So the saturated zone is going to be your aquifer. It's going to be where the groundwater is stored.